All right, so I'm Scott Moulton. I've done uh, quite a few talks here. I'm from a company primarily myharddrivedie.com, which is a data recovery company, and I do forensics for a living as well from Forensic Strategy Services. So we cross back and forth and do a number of different things. So, uh, so as you guys can see, this is supposed to be recover my porn from my raid array. So if you guys aren't either interested in raid arrays or porn, then you're in the wrong talk. So maybe you want to leave. So, and uh, I got the idea from this talk from Carlo down here. Stand up, Carlo. Wave. Thank him. <clears throat> He's going to do discreetly recover your porn. So if you don't want it posted on it no, anyway <laughs> all right so what is this talk about basically uh, we're gonna kind of run through real quick just the uh, ideas of what raid is uh, how many people in here are dealing with raid arrays on a daily basis yeah pretty much how many people have had to recover a failed raid array that's great for redundancy right like uh, if that was the point of a raid array you still have to do recovery uh, part of the problem is obviously this marketing problem. So I'm going to cover a couple of different uh, unusual types of RAID arrays. Then we're going to hit RAID 0, RAID 5, and then I'm going to try to do a demo. So hopefully it all fits in there. So, uh, so that's the idea of what we're going to cover. So I'm going to go ahead and answer the questions now. These are the three questions that I'm going to constantly get. So uh, yes, you can download these pictures, slides. MyHardDriveDie.com has got a... Uh, presentation page and DEFCON 17. I just posted these up there so you guys can go download them. And uh, her name is on the last slide. So if you can either download it or wait for the rest of this presentation, then you'll have her name. And yes, you can whatever, hire, however you give her money. And yes, she's single, but I know that, you know, for a lot of people here, because uh, I know a lot of you guys, it wouldn't make a difference whether she was married or single or anything. You don't, you don't care. I know. All right, so why are we going to talk about RAID recovery? Uh, the first reason here is uh, mainly because it's expensive. Anybody sent one into a recovery company before? Yeah, how much? 3000 That's probably just a, your personal array. See, that sucks, dude. Yeah? Yeah, you guys got... But it's, it's expensive, right? They usually either charge by the size, by the number of drives, and they usually even charge sometimes even if they don't get it back because it's so complicated to rebuild because you have multiple steps you've got to go through. You've got to go through the physical side of repairing the disk that you need to repair. I'll cover that stuff in a second. Then you've got to go through the uh, reassembly mode, and then sometimes you've got to spit it out as a full array as one solid image so that you can parse through it in some package that doesn't crash when it runs into bad sectors or something. Uh, it's a lot more difficult than doing single drives. If you've seen my previous talks here, you know already that I've covered a lot with single drives, how to do physical repair. All that stuff still applies to these, whether it's SCSI drives, it's IDE drives, whatever RAID array you're dealing with, all of that stuff. So there's like 50 hours out there I've done on do-it-yourself, repair your own drive, how to go through that process. Um, Time-consuming, it fails. But the biggest thing here is that when I leave here, like I get hundreds of questions all the time about, I've, you know, it's not my one hard drive, I have this RAID array. So I'm trying to answer these questions in a talk so you guys can get this. So here's kind of my assumptions for the talk. The first one is, is that you've already done what you've got to do from my previous four or five years of doing this kind of talk about repairing that drive. So somehow you've repaired the drive and you've either got a DD image of it or you've got a physical clone of the drive running. And there's some weird things with some clones sometimes, so I'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, and then we're also, when we're talking about RAID, my assumption here is that you're getting uh, a RAID array that you might not know anything about. Sometimes, because in the data recovery world, you may have the luxury of having a controller that you understand, that you know how the layout is, if it's own, your own personal array. But how many of you got in the mystery box? You guys got that before, right? Like, somebody hands you a pile and says, I don't know what this is, but somehow we got to do it. And if you're lucky, they wrote the number on the drives as they removed them from the RAID array. If not, then you've got, like, here's 52 cards, and figure out which ones were in the right order. So that happens uh, a lot. And I'm counting on you having, you know, maybe not porn, maybe just pictures, but, I mean, who doesn't have porn? I mean, you've been, even in company, you don't have porn, really? You're your boss or somebody might, but anyway, so. <laughs> Usually it's of themselves, and that's <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
All right, so it's kind of the do-it-yourself talk. I'm going to kind of just cover. I'm teaching you. The whole point is, is in one hour, as much as I can, uh, you're still going to have to kind of do some of your own research and figure some stuff out. Because if you can figure stuff out about the rate array itself, the order of the disk, the, the way they came out or whatever, great. If not, then we're going to kind of guess, and I'm going to show you how I guess as I go through this. After you've seen like 3,000 of these, it becomes kind of like matrix stuff. You go girl in red dress or not in red dress or whatever, but you start to see it. Um, and... We're going to do it as cheap as possible. I'd like to say free all the time, but you know, let's face it, in the commercial industry, that's where you know, the reassembly of RAID is usually a commercial product, so you're going to sometimes be stuck with buying something, so I'm going to try to stick under 100 bucks, so at least it's affordable. And then, uh, and then basically, you know, the whole point is we're going to look at pictures and sound, and we're going to try to figure it out from those things. Uh, it's going to take you a lot of time. It's going to take you a lot of disk space. There's no easy way around those things. You've got to find pictures, and you're going to constantly have to be persistent and experiment. If you've got the drives and you've repaired it and you've got images of it, you can probably figure this out, but it may take you 24 hours to actually go through rotations and things that you can actually figure out. So research helps. Slides are on myharddrivedive.com. All right, so what is a RAID array? So Functionally, we have an array of independent, and this is where the, you know, the terminology kind of gets messed up. I think originally what happened was it was supposed to be a redundant array of inexpensive disks, and somebody took a bill to the boss, and he goes, how is this inexpensive? <laughs> Explain that to me. So, so it's gone to independent, and people make up a lot of other words to put in the I spot. So uh, uh, anyway, so this is all about marketing and redundancy. Some arrays are not redundant. So now what you have in the last eight or ten years that you didn't have before with RAID arrays is you've got a box that's on a shelf, and some photographer or something comes in, sees a box, and it says RAID on it, and he buys it. And then what is that usually? What RAID is that usually? Right, zero, right? And completely worthless for those people who thought it was redundant, right? So, uh, so that's our biggest problem is that you're going to see a bunch of RAID zero. You will still see RAID one. Even though it's supposed to be a mirror, you're going to see it from time to time because whatever crap got written to the first disk got written to the second disk bad too. Uh, and then you get RAID five. Those are going to be the most common. When you get into like RAID six, RAID five EE and E and you know, other variations of RAID, you're probably not seeing those where there's a backup, but for the most part, you're going to be dealing with RAID zero and RAID five, uh, at least in a data recovery arena or something. Um, so I get these mystery boxes, and we've got to guess about it. So I'm going to talk about, just real quick, the unusual stuff, because usually you still have this multiple-step process. It's kind of like you have an operating system, but you also have a file system. So you have to deal with these things differently. So for instance, you may still have uh, the functional side of RAID, which is I've got slices, and they're on the drives, and they're all broken up in different orders. But then you may have some variations of what's actually happening to the data that's sitting on them, like XFS or ZFS or whatever else that they've written. So you have some combinations. One of the things that really kind of isn't really a RAID, but keep, people keep throwing it into that thing, is the JBODs. So you have JBODs, which are typically on like the LACI drives, or there's a bunch of different like phantoms and just different variations of drives. So I'll hit that real quick. XFS and ZFS. Uh, you're usually looking at like the Buffalo Terra stations, some variations of different ones that have Linux with Lacy drives. Lacy's kind of uh, promiscuous. They like one day of the week, or Lacy, uh, whatever they call it. But uh, one day of the week, there'll be one format. Another day of the week, there'll be a different one. So there's some variations you can start to look at and try to figure out what they are. But uh, those are some of the hardest ones to deal with because XFS and ZFS right now, very limited in the, in the number of tools that you actually have and how you process them, because there's no real easy way to deal with XFS other than doing like file carving or something like that. But that doesn't give you back metadata, like structure and directories and dates and times and file names. File names is the worst one to lose. Uh, so these are the kind of boxes that you're looking at when you're dealing with those kind of arrays. So let's talk about JBOD real quick. And who noticed that there's actually a drive on the <laughs> slide? That's what I thought, yeah. All right, so, uh, so drink. Is it every time there's porn, I got a drink? All right. So JBOD, basically just a bunch of disks. So you basically have a bunch of disks, however that they've stuck them together. Usually you're still talking about a pair. So you've got something that will basically have usually not a fan or anything. That's usually why it's broke and overheated, something melted down. Um, now you'll have two disks, and typically what will end up happening is you'll have a file system on one disk, and the second disk will just be concatenated. There will be a board or something that helps concatenate it when you get to end of this disk, then go to the next disk. So they look a lot like this right here. So uh, physically, you take these drives out. One of the drives, this is going to be similar to kind of RAID 0 in the fact that if you